This is a 2013 Volkswagen Golf R, and this is our 2013 Volkswagen Golf R, and I think that this is the most fun you can have in a modern day hot hatch for a relatively small amount of money at least by 2022 standards. Now this is a 2013 Volkswagen Golf R with 80 some thousand miles. It was a one owner car when we bought it. $19,000 is a ton of money for a nine year old Volkswagen. But in 2022, um, it's actually not that bad when you consider like a Focus RS is oh, practically what they were when they were new. Even the prices of like Focus STs and even the little Fiestas have gone way through the roof this year. So for under 20K, you get a hell of a lot of car. Let me talk you through some of the gadgets and gizmos. Now this Golf R is powered by a two liter four cylinder turbo. And this of course is the Mark VI Golf R. Now this was kind of one of the sticking points that a lot of people had when this car was new. You see, they did water it down a little bit for the US market. It's the only way to say it. So this is 256 horsepower, 243 pound feet of torque. Um, which, you know, by modern day standards, doesn't sound all that crazy when you consider like, I don't know, the Focus RS is well into the 300 horsepower range and like a new Civic Type R 300 horsepower, but 256 is a very respectable power number. This one also has like a little plug and play APR tune, so maybe like 280, 300 horsepower, but basically the APR tune in my mind kind of wakes this car up to where it was in Europe. So driving the Golf R with just that plug and play APR tune, this is a 91 octane tune. Let's see how the acceleration is. Full throttle. Oh, wow, okay. That's pretty good, and what I like about this engine is that it maintains uh, a strong torque band all the way up to redline. So many of the modern day two liters make like peak torque at, I don't know, 1800 RPM, and then die off pretty quickly. But this engine does a great job of pulling all the way up past 6,000 RPM. Now, to be brutally honest, it doesn't sound like much at all. It's a very quiet engine. It doesn't have a lot of fanfare to it but it does propel the Golf R down the road with a lot of confidence. Is it as quick as like a, uh, a Focus RS or like a Civic Type R? No, not, not nearly as quick, but it's plenty quick to have fun with and you know, you can tune them up, make them even faster. Now the Golf R did have standard all wheel drive in the US. It had a standard six speed manual transmission. It was a Halidex all wheel drive system. So primarily front wheel drive biased. Although in this generation, they did do a good job of allowing a lot of torque split to the rear end. The wheels are 18 inch wheels. Um, I think abroad you can get this with different sizes, but I'm pretty sure here in the States you can only get the 18s. Now, of course, you could get this in two different configurations. There was a three door, which is kind of a cool look, but for most folks, I think the five door is probably more useful. Push button start in the Golf R, which is funny because the key looks like it dates back to the early 2000s because quite honestly, that is the same key they did use in the early 2000s, but it works fantastic. Proximity sensor, love it. And the key is actually nice and small and compact, which is something we are missing in modern day cars. Now, speaking of the transmission options, I believe here in the States, the only option was a six speed manual. Abroad, you could get the dual clutch automatic, but we only got the six speed in the States and that is okay because it is a pretty darn good six speed. Now this one has probably loosened up a little bit over time. It's a little bit more loose than it should be, but it is a very close ratio six speed. And when you're in six gear cruising at like 75, you're spinning well over 3000 RPM, which is a little too short almost for some American highway cruising, but I love having a manual. Now from a ride and handling standpoint, the steering is very good. It's got a very mechanical, uh, very lively steering by modern day standards and it's nicely weighted and beautifully communicative. The brakes are excellent. The suspension setup in this vehicle is actually pretty compliant. It's not as firm or as, uh, as maybe rough on a daily commute as something like a Civic Type R, but it's uh, very easy to daily drive and even for long, uh, longer commutes or even road trips. like. The sheer amount of space in here is insane. I'm six feet tall and I, I can extend the seat all the way back to position where it would be impossible for me to drive with any kind of confidence. So lots of room for road trips, very quiet overall. Yeah, the, the suspension, the, the, the quality of the ride would be perfect for daily commuting. So the Golf R is of course the Halo Golf and there's a couple of ways to differentiate the R from the standard GTI. My favorite being the dual exhaust in the rear. They're not quite next to each other like you'd find on the Cooper S. You do have a little bit of a gap in between them, but a fantastic design. These ones are a little bit corroded. I think they've had a fair number of Colorado winters, but definitely one of the coolest parts about the Golf R. The other way to tell, like a 2013 Golf R from a 2013 GTI, the front bumper is different. Now that may be kind of hard to tell, but the quickest way to check is the LED running lights down here. That's kind of a cool feature. 
The Golf R was only available for two model years here in the US 2012 and 2013. And to get into the trunk of a Golf R, much like other Volkswagen products of today and back in the day, you push in on the VW emblem and then that initiates the trunk pop. Lift that open and that's how you get into the best part of the Golf R, which is the sheer amount of storage space. You see, unlike a lot of other modern coupe SUVs and even some coupe hatchbacks, this is a very squared off rear end with, of course, foldable seats. So it's super simple to get into the back of the Golf, fold them down, and you have a tremendous amount of room to store stuff. The overall dash design of the Golf R is really pretty, pretty sedate, you know, um, this is kind of the halo car back in the day. You might expect them to do some kind of cool materials or funky colors, but really you just get this kind of sea of black elephant print here. And it's not an unattractive dashboard, but it certainly isn't all that exciting to look at. The seats are certainly one of the highlights in the Golf R, these big, aggressive, bolstered buckets. Very squared off, very angular, but a great seat. So this one is, of course, wrapped in, I don't know if it's a real leather or a fake pleather, but it, it actually feels pretty good. Um, and I love the headrest design. It's squared off, it's very butch, and then you've got R located there in the headrest. Now, in terms of its function, it does have manual, forward, and aft, but both the driver and the passenger side do have electric recline, which is kind of a funky feature. One of the highlights in the Golf are the steering wheel design. I love the perforated leather. It's stitched beautifully and it has just the right amount of bolstering for your thumbs. A fantastic wheel overall. You've got phone and volume controls on the left side of the wheel. On the right side, you have some additional controls for the center instrument cluster, which is kind of cool. And then um, the cruise control and all the other controls are mounted on stocks. Very no nonsense, simple gauges in the Golf R. So you've got your rev counter on the left, a tachometer with the blue needles, which was kind of the Golf R design. Uh, below that is a temp gauge. In the middle, you do have a very simple screen. It's looking a little bit, a little dated, certainly some nine years later. And then to the right, you've got a speedometer with a 200 mile an hour maximum, which is certainly a little bit optimistic. And then of course, a simple fuel gauge. I always love the way Volkswagen do their fuel gauge, where you've got ticks for your full, your half, um, and then quarter, and then you get that little red zone to let you know when you're almost empty. One of the highlights inside the Golf R has to be this center mounted screen. I absolutely love it because it's simple, it's small, and it's basic, especially compared to the latest generation of Golf R, the Mark 8. This is a great system. Now, one of my favorite functions is this little spin wheel in the middle, which allows you to quickly access all your presets. And then to select them, you simply push it on the wheel to uh, go to that preset. Love it. But it also has a volume knob. Imagine that in 2022. A simple, easy to use volume knob. It does have a little power button on here and when you turn it, it goes off center. That is one of my little OCD things. But a phenomenal system. It's also got some modern day uh, kind of features like Bluetooth. It's got navigation with, of course, a map function. But overall, just a truly great little screen. Now abroad, I think you could get a bigger screen with a backup camera, but this was about as good as it got for the US market. I love the climate controls in the Golf R. Now, dual zone automatic, which was a really nice feature. Spin the knob and you can see it'll display the temperature there above the knob. It'll also show you in the main screen, which is kind of annoying because it gets rid of everything else on the screen. Probably not very much needed, but that's how that works. Auto functionality, you can control the direction. And then my favorite feature, the heated seats. They get super hot super quickly. And once again, it'll actually show you when you turn the heated seats on there in the main info screen. The Golf R is such an interesting mix of luxury tech with some really basic features. So for example, proximity sensors in 2013, that was very nice. It's got premium sound system, it's got heated seats, dual zone automatic climate control, but it doesn't have automatic headlights. You still have to manually turn on and off the headlights. Kind of funky. I don't know if this is going to show up in the daytime, but the headlights do this really cool little dance when you turn them on. So you flick them on and they kind of go left and then right and then centered. Um, and they do steer. These are fantastic headlights. They really work well. The backseat of the Volkswagen Golf R is a nice place to spend time. They really thought this out well. Now we do have a big hump in the middle. I assume that that holds the, uh, the drive shaft. But apart from that, lots and lots and lots of space to kind of hang out. This is my driving position at six feet tall. I actually have a little bit of additional knee room there and tons of headroom, which is fantastic. Fold this down, we've got an armrest, and back here is a ski pass-through. So in theory, if you wanted to, you could have three friends along for the ride and still be able to carry all your skis. Up top here, we do have a sunglass holder, albeit a very small sunglass holder. Close that up. And in front of here, we do have the sunroof control. Now this is the classic Volkswagen toggle, so spin the switch. 
and you can open it up, you can open it up all the way, you can open it up just part of the way. Infinite adjustability, which I find to be very German, but that is a very kind of nice feature. And then of course, it also does have a little vent control for those nice summer days. Now the VW Golf R really is a fun car for not a huge amount of money. Sure, it does miss some of the features of its European counterpart, but in 2022, it is still one of the fairly reasonable priced hot hatches on the market, considering a new one is gonna be like 40 some thousand dollars plus uh, for less than half the price. You really do get a lot of car and you don't get half the fun. You get, you get probably 80% of the fun of a new one um, for a fraction of the cost. So I love these cars, really excited about them. Uh, infinitely tunable, although I probably wouldn't. I think Volkswagen got it pretty right straight out of the box and these cars are fantastic. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. As always, this has been Tommy with the Fastlane Car. Check out tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in new vehicle reviews.